Here we're going to solve a nice little differential equation. And that equation is given by y plus y prime equals y double prime plus y triple prime. You could look at this and say, hey, well, that's just a third order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. I know exactly the techniques of how to solve such a differential equation from my differential equations class. I need to look at the characteristic polynomial, find the roots, and blah, 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 blah. But we're going to try to minimize the techniques that you would learn really after the first week of a differential equations course, just so that this is like a little bit more open to everyone. Okay, so maybe the first thing to notice here is that the left-hand side is related to the right-hand side. In fact, if you take the second derivative of the left-hand side, you get the right-hand side. So let's maybe note that. So I'll put this as, as a note. So if we set u equal to y plus y prime, then that tells us u double prime is y double prime plus y triple prime just by how the derivative and higher derivatives are defined. So that means our equation turns into the following second order differential equation. So we have u double prime equals u. And this is one of those differential equations that you can solve by guessing. What do I mean by that? Well, just go through the catalog of functions in your head and think about all functions that have the property that when you take their second derivative, you get back to themselves. Well, I think you'll notice that one of those functions is e to the x, because if you take the derivative of e to the x, you get e to the x. But that means the second derivative will also be e to the x. And then a related example will be e to the minus x. It's because if you take one derivative, you get a minus sign, but that gets canceled with the second derivative. But by some linearity properties of the derivative, we can take linear combinations of those functions. So the most general solution for this transformed differential equation is u equals c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the minus x, where c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants. Notice we don't have any initial conditions over here, so we can't find out the value of those constants. Okay, but now substituting this back, we see that we have y prime plus y is equal to c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the minus x. <clears throat> and now you could look at this and say, hey, that's a first order linear differential equation. And there's a standard method for solving first order linear dif differential equations. But I, in fact, don't want to use that standard method. I want to use another trick that will transform this to even a simpler type of equation. And that trick is as follows. I'll group all of this together and multiply by e to the x. So let's do that and then we'll see why we would want to do that in the first place. So now I can write this as e to the x times y prime plus e to the x times y equals c1 e to the 2x plus c2. Okay, nice. But check it out. This thing over here has a nice property. And that nice property is really built off of the fact that the coefficient of y prime and y are the same here. I'm going to take this e to the x which is multiplying by y and replace it with itself, but I'm gonna replace it with itself in the following form. This is the same thing as the derivative of e to the x. Well, we know that e to the x and its derivative are the same, so I didn't really change anything there. But now look at what we've got. A function times the derivative of another function, the derivative of the first function times the no derivative of the second function, that's exactly the setup for the product rule. So we can see that this is exactly the derivative with respect to x of e to the x times y. Again, just by the product rule, that would take us back up here. But now we see that this is c1 e to the 2x plus c2. Now we can just take the antiderivative of both sides. Let's see what that gives us. 
That'll give us e to the x times y on the left-hand side, because the derivative and the antiderivative just cancel. And then we'll have c1 e to the 2x. You might say, well, this is really c1 over 2, but I'm just going to absorb that over 2 into the constant because this is an arbitrary constant. So if you want to put a little star here to point out that we did some trickery absorbing constants and stuff in this step, then that's okay plus c2 times x and then plus c3, where that c3 is our new constant of integration from taking this last antiderivative. Okay, so now we can put all of this together and we have a solution. And by putting it all together, I mean we're gonna multiply both sides by e to the minus x to solve for y. So that'll give us c1 e to the x plus c2 times x e to the minus x plus c3 times e to the minus x. And that's our final solution to our original equation. And that's a good place to stop.